Welcome to the EKG Guy, if this is your first time joining us, and welcome back to those returning. We're going through our EKG coding reference guide that is now available online, and we've made ourselves uh, through part one, where we looked at the general features, normal EKG, what to expect, atrial abnormalities, including left and right atrial enlargement. Now we're in the section part two, where we're going through rhythms. We've already got through sinus rhythms. We looked at atrial rhythms, atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, multifocal atrial tachycardia. Uh, and we also got through a, a number of our junctional rhythms. And now we're starting to look at ventricular rhythms. In this lecture, we're gonna look at premature ventricular complexes and what makes them up and why they occur and what's going on and how we can identify them on the EKG. Now, if you don't have access to our EKG coding reference guide, all you have to do is enter this into your URL. Uh, you'll come to this page where you'll enter your email address, click submit, check your email for a confirmation. There will be a link there. You can click that and you'll have access to it here. Okay, and all you want to do is go to this part two, this drop down, click down, and you'll be able to follow along. If you're returning, all you can do is go to that, enter your email, and you'll bypass that whole system. Now, our website is www.ekg.md, and there you can find a number of resources, lectures, practice, our EKG course with videos that is separate from this. All right, so let's get started. So premature ventricular complex, or PVCs, okay? So also known as PVCs, uh, or ventricular premature complexes. You may hear them as different ways, but what's going on here? So as the name implies, you have a premature ventricular complex. In other words, a complex that is occurring early, premature, and originating from the ventricles. So if you imagine our heart here, here's our box diagram, our right atrium left atrium, right ventricle, and left ventricle. And if we review our conduction system, where we have the sinus node up here in the right atrium, near the superior vena cava, we have our internodal pathways, our AV node, our Bachmann bundle to the left atrium. His um, bundle here, that then has a right bundle branch, we have a left bundle branch with a left anterior and posterior fascicle. And then from there, we have our ventricular Purkinje fibers and so forth. So that's the normal conduction system where you start up here at the sinus node, then you go to the AV node and down to the ventricles. And that's how the impulse propagates. Now, what we mean when we have these ventricular complexes, you can imagine you have a maybe a normal beat followed by a beat that occurs earlier, okay? And that occurs in the ventricles, just as the name implies, premature ventricular complex. If we say premature atrial complex, it's an early beat arising in the atria. So when we see these ventricular complex, that means they're going to occur somewhere in the ventricles, okay? And we can use the EKG to sometimes identify where they're originating from. And if you can imagine a beat originating from here, or maybe here, somewhere outside the conduction system. And because it's outside the conduction system, you don't have all those gap junctions that expedite and speed up the speed of the impulse. Instead, if the impulse originates from here in the ventricles, you have slow cell-to-cell -cell depolarization, and as a result, you get wide QRS complexes. Okay, so wide QRS complexes, as you can see here. So if you look at this, and wide meaning greater than or equal to 120 milliseconds. And as a result, because it's originating from the ventricles, you don't often see a P wave. So no P waves, okay, are present because it's ventricular depolarization. That you may sometimes have, in some cases, such as in ventricular tachycardia, where you have retrograde conduction and you may see a P wave occurring, okay? But oftentimes, if it, there is one, it's buried within the QRS complex or you may see some uh, abnormality in the ST segment there. So let's take a look at this here. Taking a look at this EKG, you can see here we have a complex occurring. Okay, it appears that's like the normal, the native beat, followed by this beat, okay, then a native beat, followed by a wide beat, same thing, okay. And you kind of have this pattern where it's normal and wide. These wide beats here, are the premature ventricular complexes. So notice that there's wide complexes, okay? 
that's because of that slow cell to cell depolarization there's often no p there's no p wave that precedes it okay it may be buried somewhere within here but there's nothing that uh, comes before it and notice that it's coming early okay if you had a beat here and a beat here you would imagine that the normal beat would occur somewhere between maybe here but this beat is occurring early okay and you have this pattern where you have the normal native beat followed by these premature beats and they're occurring one after the other, okay? Every other beat is that. And that pattern is actually called bigeminy, okay? That's a bigeminal pattern of PVCs. So you have a normal beat followed by these premature ventricular contractions that are occurring, okay? And that's actually sinus beats uh, that are coming before it. So hopefully that makes sense here. All right, so again, premature ventricular complexes, you have it arising from the ventricles or some area within the ventricles, and as a result, it goes uh, and fires uh, like that sort, okay? You can imagine that this one that's occurring in this EKG is going towards lead two. So notice these positive deflections going towards lead two, okay? So imagine it coming uh, from it's actually probably going away from or originating from the right ventricle and going away from that lead okay from that inferior portion the best way to look where it's originating from is in lead v1 now we talk about this more in the course which you can learn more there but what you're seeing is pretty much these complexes that are originating from here going away from lead one likely originating from the right ventricle okay so hopefully that makes sense as well and the other thing i want you to notice is that all these complexes here these pvcs have discordance and that's normal that's what you would expect where the qrs complex is mostly positive notice how it's mostly positive and the st t wave segment is going in the opposite direction okay now that's normal in these complexes so discordant we call that Okay, and if you recall with bundle branch blocks, you tend to see the same thing. Discordance is normal in those cases. So again, what we want to get across here is these premature ventricular complexes. So notice that they come early, they originate from the ventricles, and they are wide complexes. Okay, they're like bizarre appearing complexes, and you can use the EKG to help identify where they are actually originating from. Okay, as we said, this one is here in V1, go, moving away from V1, and you can see in lead one, which would be somewhere here, it's going mostly toward it. Okay, and make sure you're using these PVCs when you're trying to localize it. Okay, so. Hopefully that makes sense there. Uh, well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available. So again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md. Okay, so this is our website. And what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate so notice that we have a number of topics practice material lectures a way for you to contribute and this is the course here over here so you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so and that's more on youtube there's another hundred more than 100 about 200 videos that are available with the course so those are separate videos and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter okay so completely separate from what you're getting online for free okay these are um, course material that comes with it so notice that you have a book okay and then you also have the pocket guide available so you can choose which format they are the same thing both these uh, book and the pocket guide uh, different formats uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go now with the book you also get videos so notice these are the videos okay and these are a video for every single page in that book so it's over 30 hours of video now there's a number of practice material that i continue to upload there okay we'll have practice questions coming soon uh, so all of that's available again this is separate from all the free material that you get already okay so this is more high yield stuff this is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here 
and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use the, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference, okay? This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows, uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay. You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay. And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.